Hello YouTube, 200th video today. And I've been thinking about the 200th video for a long time now, and um, I was going to do a black powder video, but since I ran out of hard drive space on my PC, I am not able to edit, so I'm doing a one take 200th video so I can actually continue doing stuff. So you're looking at a high screen 386, SX20, which uses a AD386 processor, made by Intel, I guess. Um, it's a laptop. It I do actually have the original battery, but I don't have it in right now because the nickel metal, metal hydrate batteries, or nickel metal, metal cadmium, or nickel cadmium, or whatever they are, uh, they are ten, they tend to blow up after time and also get fussy about charging and whatever. So I'm just running it off the power supply, which is huge. And I was trying to get this thing to boot, but hard drive messed up, and um, doesn't want to boot on any operating system such as Microsoft DOS um, or any other things. So I'm just going to show you guys. Then you can't hear a hard drive because well, I took it out of the computer. Uh, it has a monochrome display or monochrome or whatever, meaning it's two color, black and white, or in this case white and black, meaning the background is white and the screen is black, or the text is black. It does not have a mouse because touchpad uh, mice weren't invented for like 30 years. I'm not joking, they weren't invented for like 10 years that well, this thing was made, oh, what the hell. I guess they were invented or something, but yeah. Drive not ready error. Insert boot um boot disk uh boot floppy disk in A. Yeah, the fun thing about this is it's a German uh, computer, meaning it usually says things in German, which it does not. Drive not ready error. Well, that's American English or Maltese English. And then insert boot diskette, which means floppy disk. So one word. German. Rest of it, English. Kind of amusing. Oh, I actually think I know why it doesn't work. Ha uh ha -huh, I figured it out. The thing is, it has a two and a half, well, it has a three, three and a half, oh, actually, two and a half, two and a half, uh, inch hard, um, floppy drive. Yes, yeah, three and a half, three and a half inch. Uh, floppy drive, and in the bias, it is marked as a five and a half meaning it is too big. I want to enter the setup. I am pressing Dell. Hey. Run CMOS setup. Okay. Let's find this thing. Now we need... What? It says that the... Um, yeah, the three and a half is installed apparently. I doubt that. So um let's see if I can remember how to do this. Um there's some press keys. Well the system time's way off. And apparently it's nineteen eighty. Mm, yeah, well, 2012. And apparently it's Tuesday, January 1st, 1980. That was 30 years ago. Or actually, 32. So, um. Oh, I remember. I actually, that just spread that. So, let's see, where's the page up and page down? There we go. Now oh, that's. That's what I need. Yes. Oh yeah, right, I have to press the... The keyboard is kind of messed up on this thing. So, uh, here, where is a bootable disk? No, 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 no. Um, do an MS dot, MS dot, dot. Yeah, that, that, that could work. So, okay, just flip, just suck that in the heart and the floppy drive. So, ooh. 
let's see if, let's see if this actually starts. Well, the problem with this thing was the uh, buffer battery is empty, or CMOS battery, or BIOS battery, or whatever you want to call it. I think it was still called CMOS back then, not BIOS. But apparently it's working. Yeah, that's working. So I correct my statement that this thing does not boot. It does boot, but a lot of the information is I put into it when the CMOS battery drained. Yay! <laughs> it actually has a primitive internet program on it. That's like so funny. Yay! Yeah, Miss Toss works. So let's see what we have on here. Oh, that's a lot. Let's see if I can remember how to do this. There is a cat. Yeah, there we go. Let's see, what do we have on here? We have command com, which is pretty much the uh, MS-DOS system. We've got the format command, disk copy, choice, uniformat. And wait a second, because there's a cat trying to invade. I don't want Oscar. Don't mind the cats. Look, Oscar, there's a video camera right there. He's not too fond of the video camera. Say hi, Oscar. <laughs> so, yeah. Through that small interruption. Oh, that was okay. He just jumped. Oh, there's too basic. No, no, Oscar, I can't see. Thank you. Okay, this is a uh, basic, basic, literally, this is sort of basic. So if I remember this correctly, it's like 10 print, and then this, and then let's just say log, um, yeah, let's just try that. Oh, that apparently was the wrong key. So let's see here. Alt new I, the thing is kind of amusing. Okay, shift F five, press log, press I key continue. Yeah, that worked. Um, let's add an input. Oscar, you're right in the way of the camera. Let's call it basic help. No, that sucks. Apparently I did not actually add that. So yeah, I've, um, that the input thing didn't work yet. No, that's gonna be fun. So, uh, yay! It says one. Or actually it says log. Um, let's see, how can I stop this? Um, no, oh great, it's not making, it's making noises now. So, um, I don't really remember how to stop this. Sort of, which is kind of amusing. Considering I used to be a guru at this, this 
just going to restart the computer. Cat's like really messing this video up a bit. We're just going to skip the counting of the memory. Yeah, this thing is actually it's basically a very old school laptop. I don't know if there's a laptop running uh, the 8286, but I doubt it. I actually have another laptop that I could show that's about from the same age, or the same era. That's just like going crazy right now. Yay for the kitty. Yeah, if you, um, if you like this kind of computer -y stuff, uh, thumbs up. And uh, if you get enough thumbs up, or at least some interest in this, I might actually re review my other very old laptops and computers and stuff, because oh boy, do I have a lot of those. Actually, I have more old computers than I have high voltage equipment. No, that's not true. Um, but it's close. Very close indeed, too. If we have the editor, indeed we do. Well, that's the basic text editor from uh, Microsoft DOS. And when running Microsoft DOS, off of a floppy disk, you could do you whoops you could do something like this. I'm just gonna take this uh, SUSE net floppy disk. Cool file alt exit, and now it yeah that was a dumb idea. But if I actually look at this drive, and I can see there's a SCSI mode dot gc or gz or other uh, dash mo and other things. So yeah, I can actually see how many how many uh, how much space there is left on the floppy disk and other things. Um, see here what. Let's just look at this floppy disk. If you're asking yourself, how does this work when he has the operating system in his hand? Easy. Load into the systems in the system memory, or also known as cache, and runs off that. Runs off of that. Good thing I have the copyright copy protection in there. You know, Oscar, I expect that that's off. Sorry that my cat's in, sort of in the way. Let's see here, it's session D slash P. That should. should basically Yep, it worked. So you can uh do that. And I could make other commands such as the L command that I used to use because I <laughs> use Linux a lot or at least I used to until I got into video editing and then I started using Windows. So um yeah I was kinda used to the L command for my old IT teacher and stuff. So, yeah. Kitty wants to go out again. Bye, my Oscar. Thanks for looking by. Okay. Enough of that. So, yeah, and inside the computer are just a few boards, buffer batteries.
battery. There's nothing special to actually look at inside. I'm not going to take it apart for you guys. Well, I think I actually will because I have to reinstall the hard drive. So I'm just going to shut this thing down. Take out the power connector, which looks vaguely like a video connector. Don't plug that into your TV. Just close this thing. Do not mind this. I got this thing used. So, um, yeah. I also have a 8046 laptop, which I am going to show you guys in a different video. If you like, <laughs> if you like this thing, you're gonna want to see the other one. So, yeah, because that thing actually has a hard drive, <laughs> and that actually works. And the, I replaced the buffer battery. Okay, I replaced it like four years ago, but still it should work. I just shouldn't have done that. So the keyboard of this computer just. I apparently did not unscrew the screw correctly. So I'm just going to continue unscrewing. There you go. Screws out. The keyboard just lifts up like this. And I just rip the keyboard out. But yeah. I can I can fix that problem. Just lift these things up. There's a ooh, there's a screw in there. Oh that's bad. Good thing it didn't short out anything. I thought there was one in there. Didn't realize that there. I actually was one laying on power resistors. Not power resistors, but on resistors. See, over here we have the buffer battery. Or CMOS battery. I have to see if I can actually have... I actually still have everything in frame. Yeah, this is the floppy drive. This is the graphics card, if I remember correctly. Uh, that's the connector for the uh, hard drive. That's the floppy drive connector. I already showed you guys a buffer battery, and I'm going to see if I can get to the actual CPU of the thing and show you the 8386. I do actually have a few spares 8386, so I could just show you um, the spare ones, but I'm just going to show you guys how it looks inside this thing. If I remember correctly, it's a chip, surface mount chip, not a real 8386, but yeah, other than that. off again. Well, first of all, I'd say take out the screws. <laughs> I'm going to be so happy when this thing is supposed to start. Um, yeah, that doesn't really do anything to the subject of old computers, but I just wanted to say that. Okay, I forgot a screw down here. I don't know when the last time was I took this apart. It was like ages ago. Well, I guess if you want one of these, you can find one on eBay, I guess. What the? There are more screws? Okay. Okay, I'm not going to do that because these feet are just going to break, and I do not want that. But yeah, there is... Ah, uh, they are actually under the feet. God damn it. Well, back here are some uh, connectors. Like a serial connector, LPT, VGA, and there's a one for the docking station. This is where the uh, battery fits in. So that. Okay, just squished foot. They're like ah, manky. Actually, never. I don't know if I didn't even take this thing apart because <laughs> I couldn't get those feet off. 
So yeah, sorry that I can't, can't show you guys inside, but I cannot get those feet off and I don't want to break them. So I'm just going to screw everything back together. But yeah, the uh, CPU would be located somewhere around here. That's I think there's actually a speaker in there. Um, no, that's actually the battery. Oh, it's... I think it's actually with this thing right here. I think that could actually be the 386. Let's definitely warm. Uh, well, this is the keyboard plug. Or jack, if you, if you wonder. So, yeah. It's a neat little old computer. Or laptop. Rather, because, yeah. yeah. The fun part is the hard drive didn't work from the, uh, when I got this. And it didn't say how many cylinders and sectors and whatever it had on it, so I had to put in a new hard drive where it actually had information, and uh, the hard drive broke. That kind of sucks. Or at least the uh, buffer battery is easier to replace in this computer than in the old computer, in the uh, 486. 40, 46. Because, oh boy, was that fun. I had to unsolder the battery. Ugh, that sucked. Okay, I'm going to reinstall the hard drive just for sake of keeping the thing together. You can read that. It's a Connor hard type hard drive, Auto CP 2064. Um, actually, doesn't say anything thing about cylinders and stuff. Oh, up there. No, it doesn't say anything else. Um, yeah, this thing is mag. Definitely a large two and a half inch hard drive, not those little tiny laptop ones you get nowadays. So um, yeah, I got I I got a box of the uh, old two and a half inch hard uh, yeah two and a half inch hard drive. Yeah, and this was one of them, and apparently it is broken. Thumbs up if you want to see more of these kinds of things, because I will make more videos on old computers. Get a copy of for my high voltage stuff. This video has been, oh my god, <laughs> 24 minutes, or 22 minutes, actually, no, 24 minutes, almost 24 minutes, so that is a long, long video. So, sorry guys, but, yeah, this is kind of interesting, too, wouldn't you say? How often do you get to see a 386 laptop? Yeah, that's this small, because there's a, I saw a video made by... I remember who was just a, I just saw a video like a few days ago, maybe a week ago, showing a suitcase type three eighty six laptop -y kind of laptop thingy computer -y thingy. And um yeah, this is actually how these laptops looked back in the days. And I will dig out other laptops if you want to see other laptops and dig out the old, other old computers. For instance, I've got a uh, 80... what was it? 80... 80, I think it was? Processor? Uh, made by Victor. A company called Victor. Uh, plus, I have the... Uh, uh, what's it called again? Ah. You 
know that uh, ghetto-y, rocky type thing? Um, uh, what was it? What was it? Oh, God damn it. Um, yeah, I sort of managed to forget, the, to forget the name of that stone. Well, it's an orange type, or it's an orange display, so... Yeah, it's kind of fun. I'm just going to clean up these things and um, upload this video right now. And uh, this will be uploaded today. Today is uh, Thursday 12th, I think. 2012. And it's January. So, yeah, guys, thanks for watching. And if you want more of these computer -y videos, just thumbs up. And we're just like this video, and I will see you in the next video. And sorry that I couldn't do the black powder video, so bye-bye.